bring in Steve Sands, one of the great voices with NBC Sports, play-by-play, host and interviewer. And we'll get to the PJ Tour in a moment. Let me get your thoughts on Tom Brady, the broadcaster. You know what, Dan? I was thinking about it when you were just talking about it. And we had Tiger in the booth, David Faraday and I, on NBC in December at the Hero World Challenge. Tiger, the greatest player of his generation. Tom Brady, the greatest player of his generation. Uh, And we were all wondering, how's this going to play out? And we had Tiger in the booth, Dan, for probably 40, 45 minutes. Uh, Live golf going on. His golf acumen is incredibly high, just like Tom Brady's. His preparation is, you know, unmatched, just like Tom Brady's. And we all thought, how's this going to work out? And and Tiger was fabulous, Dan. He was incredible talking about the players of today versus the way he played, the way golf courses are attacked now uh, versus when he was, say, in his heyday. Um, He was very in tune with the guys who were playing the game at the time and the best players in the world who were there at the Hero World Challenge. And he was fantastic. We were ready to sign him up right there uh, back in December. And this was five months ago. Um, I think it's potential uh, for Tom Brady, Dan. I like you. You never know how it's going to play out. You know he's going to be ready. You know he's going to give it his all. You know he's going to work and he's going to prep. Um, The question is, does he have the enthusiasm? Uh, Does he have um, the ability to go criticize other players who he's played against, coaches he's played against, coaches he's played for. Uh, I think it's going to be fascinating. And why wouldn't you? If you have the money to do it like Fox does, why wouldn't you sign Tom Brady? His star power alone is going to make people watch. But when you have somebody polarizing, like Tom Brady is not easy to root for for a lot of people. Right. He's got everything. And now he got he's going to make even more money after playing football than he did when he made, you know, $300 million playing football. Yeah. I, I, I think that we love to what make people stars and then tear them down. Is that how it works? Yeah. I, look, the, the analogy in golf would be with tiger. The only person you could possibly compare Tom Brady to in today's game is tiger. And I'm telling you, tiger was fabulous in the booth with us. He was insightful. Uh, he was entertaining. He told some stories uh, he said what it's like to be these guys. Um, he was allowing the audience, Dan, to kind of get a little bit of an understanding of what Justin Thomas and John Rahm and these great young players are now going through and what they're about to go through if they bust that door wide open. So if you're Tom Brady and you're on Fox and you're standing next or you're sitting next to Kevin in the booth and you're at a huge game and say it's a Cowboy game and Dak Prescott hasn't yet won that Super Bowl that everybody is dying for him to win, to validate his contract and validate what everybody thinks is amazing potential out of Dak Prescott. I'm just using him as an example, Dan. Tom can tell the audience exactly what he's about to go through and what he's trying to do. And if he's able to communicate that, and Tom, by the way, like Tiger, Dan, has become a much better communicator. Seems like he's been freed up since he left New England and went down to Tampa Bay. Um, I think that it's worth a shot from Fox. Um, And again, he's the biggest star in all of professional football, maybe in all of sports. He's recognizable by anybody who's never heard of a hockey puck, a basketball or a first down line. And I think I think it's worth a shot uh, to give Tom the money if they have the money, which clearly they do. And uh, I think it's going to be fascinating to see what type of communicator he is with a headset on and not just with a microphone in his face being asked questions by people like us. Steve Sands, Golf Channel, NBC Sports. I wanted to talk to you about this live tour, the Saudi-backed tour, and what this is going... Let's say nobody uh, knows anything about this topic, the casual fan. What, what would you tell them about this tour and the impact, potential impact on the PGA Tour? Well, to the casual fan, I would say if you've heard of the USFL, uh, it's not analogous because one's international uh, for the most part, and one was completely domestic. The USFL tried to go against the NFL years ago. They had Herschel Walker. They had Kelvin Bryant. They had guys like that, uh, and it didn't work. Uh, what Live Golf is trying to do is compete against the PGA Tour, and the PGA Tour is the biggest and baddest, uh, wealthiest, most prestigious uh, golf tour in the world, um, and they are trying to stave off uh, any type of competition. And that's what Live Golf is trying to do. They are backed uh, by Saudi dollars and they have a lot of money. Um, someone told me the other day, it's kind of like playing poker with someone, Dan, and sitting across the table. And that guy has all the chips 
Uh, clearly, they have the money and they have the backing. Uh, whether or not they'll be able to get the players and be able to get this thing started to compete, literally compete against the PGA Tour, we'll have to wait and see. But also, Greg Norman is heading this up, and it feels like Greg Norman is really, really mad at the PGA Tour. Yeah, he's been mad at the PGA Tour for a long time. If you remember all the way back to, I know you're a golf fan, you and I text back and forth, we've known each other for years. Uh, for the casual sports fan, but for the diehard golf fan, they know this, but for the casual sports fan who, who's you know listening and watching your show right now, Dan, way back when, 25, 30 years ago, Greg Norman, who's from Australia, um, huge personality, uh, was an incredibly popular and polarizing figure in golf. He wanted to start a big world tour. Uh, the PGA Tour thwarted that off, and they built what became the World Golf Championship events, a three or four golf tournament series that were played around the world. Uh, and one of them is still played today, actually. The match play in Austin, uh, Texas, was in, played in March. And Greg has had an interesting relationship with the PGA Tour ever since. Um, and, and clearly, he is now on the live golf side as opposed to the PGA Tour side currently. Was Phil Mickelson suspended? Was he in timeout? And now he's allowed <laughs> to play in the PGA Championship? I don't know if he was suspended officially. Um, I, we were told that the players that he took a break uh, and that the PGA Tour accepted that. Um, if he wanted to play, I'm, I'm sure that he could go and take the correct routes, uh, have the correct communication with the PGA Tour Commissioner, Jay Monahan, and get back onto the golf course competing uh, at a PGA Tour level. Uh, you know, Phil, as you've documented many times, um, got himself in some trouble with some of the things that he said um, and needed to take a timeout and not just a 20, Dan. He needed to take a full. <laughs> and he clearly uh, has taken a full. He has not competed in a long, long time. PGA Tour going to be able to keep these, like you're, I'm trying to figure out what that relationship is like. You don't want to anger these players. You still need these players for your tour. Yeah. Um, can they suspend people? Fine people? Like, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what the end game will be here of how you yeah. can keep everybody happy ish on the PGA tour. You know, I think that it's very dicey. It's a tricky spot uh, for the PGA tour, but, but maybe it's not, maybe what they did a couple of days ago, Dan, by not allowing their players to have the releases to go play in the first live golf event next month outside of London. Maybe that's the power play that the PGA Tour uh, thinks is the best move uh, to keep its players. Uh, we've heard the players in the last couple of days at the at t Byron Nelson uh, outside of Dallas, Dan, say things like, hey, if you wanna go play, you can play. There's nothing stopping the players, Dan, from going to play in live golf. What they would have to do is either lose their PGA Tour rights, in other words, leave the PGA Tour. So now they're completely independent from the PGA Tour. Um, but the PGA Tour is a player organization, Dan. The players make their own bylaws. If they want to change the rules, if they want to change the bylaws, they can do that. Uh, will they do that? I don't think they will. The PGA Tour has been such an amazing avenue for all of these players. We heard Tiger say in December at the Hero World Challenge that he has no interest in live golf, that he is completely backing Jay Monahan and the PGA Tour. Now, do they need to make a couple of tweaks to appease the star players, Dan? Do they need to raise the, the purses or change the way things are done, uh, especially for the best players in the world? Yes, they do. And the PGA Tour recognizes that. But if the players want to go play, Dan, they can play. But it's kind of like freedom of speech, Dan. You know, everybody thinks freedom of speech covers everything. Well, it doesn't cover everything. And there are consequences to things that you say. And if you go play live golf and you're a PGA Tour member, there will be consequences. And yes, the PGA Tour can suspend the players. Great to talk to you as always, Steve. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Dan. Anytime. Steve Sands, NBC Sports, play-by-play. -play. Also works uh, Golf Channel.